Good day and happy Breastfeeding Awareness Month. I am Dr. Resti Bautista, Chief of the Division of Newborn Medicine. For this session, I am tasked to lecture on making our hospital mother-baby friendly. The Philippine General Hospital has been a mother-baby friendly accredited facility since the 1990s. Our most recent certification was last July 17, 2019. Here we have some photos of the accreditation visit from the Department of Health in 2016, a plaque of recognition from World Vision in 2018, PGH Namumuna Namumuno Pukodang, and a recent infographic produced by the PGH Information Office. We are thankful that the PGH administration continues to be supportive of our mother-baby friendly practices through the years, especially in this time of pandemic. Here, we have the definition of a mother-baby friendly hospital as provided by the DOH. We will use this definition as our outline for this session, beginning with an overview of the 10 steps to successful breastfeeding, followed by a discussion on enforcement of the milk code and support of breastfeeding in the workplace at PGH. Let's now discuss the implementation of 10 steps to successful breastfeeding at PGH. Step one, have a written breastfeeding policy that is routinely communicated to all staff. The UP PGH breastfeeding policy has been developed by the PGH breastfeeding committee and is routinely communicated to all health care staff. All staff involved in the care of mothers and newborns are expected to be familiar with this policy. The policy is made available throughout the maternity units and in areas where antenatal and postnatal care takes place. The PGH policy covers all the 10 steps, as well as prohibiting free supplies of breast milk substitutes, bottles and teats, and promotional materials. The policy also clearly defines what the staff and services are required to do as routine practice in relation to mothers who are not breastfeeding. Step two, train all healthcare staff in skills necessary to implement this policy. All healthcare staff at PGH are provided with training and continuous education in the skills necessary to implement our breastfeeding policy. This includes this 20 hour lactation management training workshop held quarterly for physicians, nurses, midwives, and nursing assistants from the various areas of the hospital and outpatient department, which serve mothers and their newborns. We also conduct an orientation for essential newborn care for all relevant staff and trainees. We have a four-hour mother-baby-friendly hospital orientation for all paramedical and non-medical employees indirectly involved in maternal and newborn care. Lastly, we have our annual Breastfeeding Awareness Month celebration in August. The training at all levels addresses the 10 steps, breastfeeding counseling, and the international milk code. Step three, inform all pregnant women about the benefits and management of breastfeeding. Pregnant women need accurate information that does not promote a commercial product, such as infant formula. This information should be relevant to the specific woman. If pregnant women do not discuss the information with a knowledgeable health worker, they may make decisions based on incorrect information. By the time a baby is born, the new mother must be comfortable about breastfeeding, understanding its benefits, and what she has to do. At PGH, all expectant mothers will be oriented individually during their antenatal visits regarding practices that will support their breastfeeding immediately after birth, the benefits of breastfeeding, the dangers of milk formula, essential newborn care or unang yakap, and how to initiate breastfeeding immediately after birth. Step four, help mothers initiate breastfeeding during the first hour of life. EGH was one of the first hospitals in the country to fully implement unang yakap. Helping mothers initiate breastfeeding during the first 20 to 60 minutes of life the standard practice at PGH. The hospital staff is available at all times to help mothers initiate breastfeeding soon after birth. Uninterrupted skin-to-skin -skin contact is maintained between the mother and newborn. 
mindful of the feeding cues or readiness of the baby to breastfeed. Step five, show mothers how to breastfeed and how to maintain lactation, even if they should be separated from the infants. Helping mothers to breastfeed effectively with a proper technique is a vital step. If the newborn is separated, mothers need to express their milk. At PGH, health workers are expected to have skills to help them. There will be hospital staff available at all times to support mothers, showing them how to breastfeed with good position and correct attachment and to recognize signs of effective suckling. The hospital staff will coach mothers how to maintain lactation, even if they should be separated from their babies, by early and regular hand expression. Step six, give newborn infants no food or drink other than breast milk, unless medically indicated. At PGH, newborn infants are given only breast milk to eat or drink, unless medically indicated. If supplementary feeds are needed, staff must first examine the possibility of obtaining expressed breast milk. If the mother or parents insist on supplementary feeds, the staff will raise awareness of the potential effects of its use and ensure the mother is aware of normal breastfeeding patterns. This is properly documented and if possible, the mother and doctor sign the records regarding her informed decision. Since 2013, PGH stopped all purchase of newborn milk formula with substantial savings for the hospital. Should mothers with HIV be advised not to breastfeed? The infant's chances of survival are greater if fed artificially if the mother knows she is infected and if breast milk substitutes are affordable and can be fed safely with clean water and if adequate health care is available and affordable. If infant mortality is high due to infectious diseases like diarrhea and pneumonia, and if hygiene and sanitation and access to clean water are poor, or if the cost of breast milk substitutes are prohibitively high, and if access to adequate health care is limited, then breastfeeding may still be the safest feeding option, even if the mother is HIV positive. Medications and breastfeeding. There are a few absolute contraindications to breastfeeding or use of expressed breast milk when the mother is taking medications. We ask our colleagues in internal medicine or family medicine to refer to lactmid. Many drugs will have little or no data for use during breastfeeding. It then becomes a matter of weighing the very small theoretical risk of side effects to the newborn versus the very real short and long-term benefits of breastfeeding. These decisions should be individualized for each mother and her infant. Step seven. Practice rooming in. Allow mothers and infants to remain together 24 hours a day. And step eight, encourage breastfeeding on demand. Rooming in helps a mother to learn the feeding cues of her baby and how to care for her baby. It helps to feed in response to those cues, what we call demand feeding, rather than to feed by a clock. Babies who have to cry to be fed use up energy crying and may fall asleep without feeding well. Direct rooming in after birth has long been a policy at PGH, allowing mothers and infants to remain together 24 hours a day. Rooming in is implemented for all stable mothers and their newborns. Staff are expected to support mothers in becoming accustomed to the baby's presence and reassured to their noises, safety, and normality of frequent feeds. Staff will encourage mothers to keep the baby close to them in their beds at all times, preferably not using any bassinet. Staff will also encourage breastfeeding on demand by ensuring that mothers understand baby's cues to feed and offer breastfeeds at these times. They make sure that mothers are able to recognize effective breastfeeding and to know that eight to 12 breastfeeds in 24 hours is the norm. Mothers are expected not to limit the duration of feeding and not to time the feeds. No restrictions are to be placed on the frequency and length of feeding. Step nine, at PGH, we do not give artificial teats or pacifiers to breastfeeding infants. 
the use of artificial teats or pacifiers may interfere with the baby learning to breastfeed and adversely affect milk production. No dummies or soothers are to be given by the staff. If parents use a dummy, staff will inform them that the use of pacifiers to substitute suckling at the breast will ultimately decrease lactation. Express breast milk can be given by cup as alternative to artificial teats. The hospital security force will not allow milk formula, pacifiers, and infant feeding bottles to be brought into the hospital without approval from a physician. Step 10, foster the establishment of breastfeeding support groups and refer mothers to them on discharge from the hospital or clinic. UBPGH is partnered with the Manila City Health Office, Pasay City Health Office, and other city health offices to establish breastfeeding support and refer mothers on discharge from the hospital to the local health center. In addition, Operation Foster Milk began with lactating mothers donating their breast milk to help feed infants dislocated by Typhoon Sendong, or Severe Tropical Storm Washi, in the southern cities of Cagayan de Oro and Iligan in 2011. Continuous networking with communities of like-minded mothers helps sustain regular milk wetting projects and breastfeeding awareness. PGH is now recognized as a command center for breast milk donations, such as during Super Typhoon Yolanda, also known as Haiyan, and the ongoing COVID pandemic. Let us now discuss the enforcement of the International Code of Marketing of Breast Milk Substitutes as an integral component of making PGH mother-baby friendly. Executive Order No. 51, or the Milk Code, was signed into Philippine law by former President Cory Aquino in 1986. Regulated acts include any form of advertising, or promotion, whether direct or indirect, of covered products. Prohibited acts include giving of samples and supplies of products or gifts of any sort, any point of sale advertising or promotion device, or giving of gifts, articles, utensils, which promote the use of breast milk substitutes or bottle feeding. It is important to understand the scope of the milk code, what products are covered by EO51, and its revised implementing rules and regulations. These include breast milk substitutes, including infant formula. Other milk products marketed as partial or total replacement of breast milk, feeding bottles and teats, foods and beverages marketed as partial or total replacement of breast milk complementary foods, and other products that may undermine breastfeeding. Do not break the code. UPPGH strictly enforces the International Code of Marketing of Breast Milk Substitutes. No advertising of artificial milk will be seen in the hospital. No free samples of breast milk substitutes will be given to mothers or pregnant women. UPPGH does not accept free or subsidize some supplies of breast milk substitutes. There will be no contact between company personnel marketing milk and mothers. UPPGH employees will not accept gifts from these companies. There will be no available breast milk substitutes found for sale in the PGH pharmacy or any private clinics. We will now briefly discuss support of breastfeeding in the workplace at PGH. Republic Act number 10028 stipulates setting up of lactation stations in private enterprises and government offices, as well as provision of lactation periods for breastfeeding employees in addition to meal time at least a total of 40 minutes for every eight hour work period. Implementing rules and regulations requires that workplaces comply with the milk code and defines lactation periods as two to three breast milk expressions 
lasting 15 to 30 minutes each within a workday. UPPGH will ensure that their employees who choose to continue to breastfeed will be allowed to do so in the workplace. PGH has committed to provide a clean space or room for working mothers to either breastfeed or express for breast milk. This room shall be private and equipped with a sink for proper hand washing, an electrical outlet if the mother wishes to use an electrical breast milk. Let us work together to ensure each of these important components of mother-baby friendly practice at PGH. Optimal implementation of each step to successful breastfeeding, strict compliance with the International Code of Marketing of Breast Milk Substitutes, and support of breastfeeding in the workplace. With our Bionian spirit burning bright, we can keep UPPGH a truly mother-baby friendly hospital. Thank you.